Welcome back to the Overguard Podcast. It's your host, Brett. I'm here with my co-host, Mike. Hey, everyone. And we have two guests with us today. Uh, for the first time, we have a guest from each console. We have Abonts from uh, PlayStation playing for REM, and we have Junebug from Xbox playing for Reborn. Why don't you, int- why don't you introduce yourselves, guys? Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Abonts. I play uh, um, Tank for Team REM, a.k.a. the Miro or Miro of PS4. And I'm Junebug, and I play support for Reborn, and I'm also the team captain as well. Awesome, guys. Uh, so we have a um, we have a pretty packed podcast today, because I know, once again, we missed the every week podcast thing. We had some stuff pop up, uh, but we're here. We're getting one out today, um, and we have a lot yeah, to talk about. A lot about. of news to cover. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so really quick, going through the checklist, uh, why don't you just go top to bottom, Mike, tell us what we got on the agenda for today. Right, so we're going to be going over what... The tournament that we had last weekend, uh, that was a big sponsor tournament. Can't wait to go over the uh, details about that. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Xbox one that's coming up. We're going to be going over the official Xbox teams that we selected for season one of the league. Uh, we're also going to be talking about the gauntlet this weekend and probably go over some of the patch notes that was just released with Sombra. Yeah, uh, obviously those patch notes were huge. The game's very different right now than it was. And I'd really, Absolutely. really want to hear, I'm, I'm really happy to hear that we have a you know, we have two players that play different roles, and I'd like to hear, you know, each of their perspectives on these patch on this patch. I'll let me get to it. But for, for starters, we're gonna hop right into the uh, the Battlefy and Control Freak sponsored uh, tournament we held last week. Um Abon's actually competed in it. And like he said, he's a uh, he plays I'd like to say he plays Reinhardt, but he's been playing a lot of Winston lately for REM. Uh, and uh, it was a really long but really good and fun tournament i uh, casted 90 percent of it gozi casted 100 percent of it really long day i mean i sat down on my computer chair around 11 a.m and i don't think i got up until about 11 30 p.m uh and i think i then slept until about 1 p.m the next day i don't know about gozi but um i'm sure the people competing it was just as long a abons what did you uh, what did you like about that tournament <laughs> Um, I liked, uh, from the tournament is that you don't get to play against uh, many teams that are in the OGCC. Like, I didn't get to play any teams that were from the OGCC, but watching them play and, like, just trying to study them was all, it was really great because, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to see most of those teams, like, uh, Five Mikes, Otaku. I'm sure I'll see those guys. I don't know if, uh, Cactus, our kids, is going to be in the Premier League, or I'm not sure if they're an OGCC team, right. but, uh. Um, I'm hoping to see all those teams there. It's just like a nice way to how to scout um, new teams. Yeah, it really is. It, it was a uh, a tournament that I think basically almost all the PlayStation 4 talent was in. You know what I mean? Like if there yeah. wasn't too many teams of six that weren't in this tournament. Uh, as far as the the uh, the teams you named, yeah, those are all teams that will be in the gauntlet this upcoming week. Uh, another team was Revival. I mean, they were in our Final Four. Um, a lot of team players that, you know, people know. Ryan AM, uh, Try Hard Rice Ninja, the entire team, top to bottom. Uh, and they've yet to compete in the Premier League. So it was really cool to get to see them uh, on the main stage. I agree. Um, personally, I want to thank everyone who did come out and watch the stream. I think we peaked at about 890 viewers, which is uh, crazy. And we yeah. averaged, for the 12-hour event, we averaged about, I think, 620. So... Right, right. Um, really, really awesome, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, I know the entire staff does. So uh, I also yeah, want to say... that was a really big turnout. So. Yeah, it was great. It was really great. Um, I also want to say thank you to Control Freak and Battlefy for allowing us to run that tournament. Uh, and we do have more coming on the horizon. There's going to be more uh, super solid information about that later in the podcast. Um, Abons, so you guys you guys went up against Last Rites, correct? Yeah, and uh, I think semifinals. Yeah, so in the final right. four, so it was a rematch of our season three playoffs. Um, this time things went a little bit different. Did you guys both have your full rosters there, the same as, or were they different? Pretty much, yeah. We had our uh, full roster. Um, we're still trying things out right now, but uh, yeah, it was a, it was a full roster, pretty much. Right. Okay. I couldn't I couldn't exactly remember. Um, Close series. I mean, every match came right down to the last 
in the last 30 seconds, it felt like. Um, and those are the series you don't really want to see end because you don't really feel like either um, either team is deserves to lose because of how well both teams were playing. Um, right. What is there anything you can say off the top of your head that Last Rights did better this time than they did in the playoffs against you guys? Um, was there something they uh, countered? Was there something they exploited? Or was do you think it just might have been fatigue? I think uh, I think their positioning was uh, really well. Um, specifically, the De- defies. Mm-hmm. Like I thought he was throughout the entire series. I thought defies was the biggest problem in their team. Um, uh, Ryu got in. Uh, Ryu's fair was actually not bad. Like I actually thought it was like pretty good. He came around, and got some uh, got some kills with his uh, fair barrage, but. I think the biggest problem was uh, was the Reaper uh, positioning that he had because it was really good. Like I know most of the time he was in the fights, and uh, I know Defies is like known as like a top Reaper for sure, and like he proved it there. So you know, yeah, absolutely. I, I Defies did have a couple sweet plays. Um, then you guys went on to play Revival in the third place match. The difference between some league some league compensation or some still control freak gear. Um, that's a team that, have you guys ever, have you ever played against, uh, that Revival team before as Team R.E.M.? That was Ryan A.M. and those guys? Uh, yeah, we screened them, like, once, but that was whenever Intrinsic was still around. They used to run a lot of, a lot of triple tank on us, and, uh, we didn't really know how to counter it. And we were hoping to become script partners with them because we wanted to know how to deal with it, but, uh, like, Intrinsic ended up leaving the team or something, and then, uh, uh, and I think they picked up a couple of new guys like Tryhard Rice Ninja. I don't believe he was there before. Yeah, that's the May. Um, and that May was definitely a problem throughout the tournament. How did you guys deal with uh, his May? Uh, I think we just focused her down. I can't I can't remember that well. Uh, I know he swapped. He eventually swapped off of May and went to Reinhardt at, on an Umbani map. But uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't. That was that match went on off stream, so not a lot of people, lot of people got to see it. But REM did beat Revival um, and took third place in the tournament. And uh, really looking forward to seeing both teams competing, hopefully in the Premier League in the upcoming season. Um, so that kind of leads into our next bit. We actually have another one coming up, another Control Freak Battle Five tournament uh, coming up in just a few weeks. Mike, if you want to actually uh, read that bit I just sent you a couple minutes ago, what we got right. coming up. Yeah, give me one second here and just pull it up. All right, so you want me to tell them about uh, all the news that's going to be on with it, like when it ha- when it's happening? All yeah, that kind yeah, of stuff? those basic details I sent you. All right, so uh, November 25th, we're going to be having evening matches. Uh, November 26th is another date for it, I believe. It's for both days, correct? Yes. All right, so 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time through 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Strict schedule will be met because last... Uh, from the last tournament, we, uh, we kind of concluded a few details about how it went down. We want to change some things. So yep. a strict schedule is going to be met, and it's going to be open registration. Really looking forward to seeing that because I know the Xbox community has really been excited to finally start competing in the Overguard. And it's been about, I think since we welcomed the Xbox community into the Overguard, it's been about two months and now. weeks. Yeah, and, that's um, crazy, man. How do people have been sticking around? Yeah, we've had... Three three qualifiers and one open tournament for them to play in, but I mean, really not enough. So I'm really excited to get this tournament underway. Uh, I think we have a couple more after that, and then we also have the league starting up, obviously, fairly soon. So um, let me uh, let me just give a quick shout out since we are now uh, we're dealing with Overwatch competitors, the Xbox Club, uh, the no- number one Overwatch club on uh, on Xbox. Uh, if you, any of you guys from there are listening to this, we it is going to be open registration. So if anyone's uh, interested in you know forming a team and uh, coming around and seeing how we do things when we run tournaments or trying to join the OGCC and try to get into the league, now is the time to get into it. Yeah, absolutely. I think this this tournament's going to be still built around the stream, but a little less so than the uh, PlayStation one was because um, that got got a little crazy uh, with the amount right. of time that we were live. So. June, did you watch much uh, much of the PlayStation tournament? I watched matches and bits and pieces of it. I didn't make it to the grand finals, but I did watch Revival versus Striatum, and that was a really good match. That was an amazing match. That really yeah. was. That really I was. agree. Um, what did you think about the way that tournament uh, that w- was running? Is that something that you got? You think Xbox is excited to see? Is it something you like? Guys- 
that's something we just like have been waiting for for a long time. Like we haven't had anything like that before. So like seeing like this gonna happen for something some people like us, like that's gonna open up a lot of doors for everyone to just to pull out all their like best uh, abilities and just like go out and show everyone else that hey we can play just like PS4 can you know or right. even better. Absolutely, right. absolutely. It's a uh, finally a situation where it's worth. Uh, Xbox for really, really, really compete at a high level. So um, excited to do it because I think we've had we've had a few obviously prize pool tournaments on PlayStation, and I don't think Xbox has really had one besides whatever GB offers. So once again, big shout outs to uh, Battlefying Control Freak. Without you guys, uh, obviously this wouldn't be possible. So I really, really appreciate you guys from from the Overguard, and I think uh, from the players as well. It means a lot having uh, awesome sponsors like you guys making these things. Uh, able to be possible. So enough with the sellouts. Let's move on to the uh, the next portion we got. Um, uh, we want to go over the Xbox teams. Yeah, yeah. So this is pretty exciting. Uh, exciting news. I know a lot of the Xbox teams have really been curious about who's making it. So uh, I'm actually going to be making this list official right after we record this podcast. So um, technically, this is kind of intel, but at the same time, it'll be public knowledge by the time the podcast drops. Um, so as far as our teams that won qualifiers, they obviously already qualified. Um, so we had like we had a couple teams make some changes uh, and shuffle up the rosters. But the final list, final six: the Angry Camels, Reborn, Inception, Impact, Omni, Ego. Uh, the team that is captained by Welsh Mania. They don't have a team name yet. Exodus. Revival, the team that is captained by Prophecy, and we are actually currently, now that I see that mistake, we're actually going to be probably bringing in one more team. So there were a couple teams that didn't get on this list. Uh, we're going to be figuring that out after this podcast. I'm going to be figuring out, the, looking at my next team up. Uh, so that team, if you see you're on the list and you're not in this podcast, you were the last team selected. So congratulations. Uh, but you did, you did make it though. So hey, you know, it's kind of a it's kind of like a left-handed compliment. But um, anyways, so those that's the list. Uh, Joom initial. Some talent, man. Yeah, some yeah, talent for on some sure. Of these teams. For sure. Yeah. Looking at these teams, Joom, uh, right off the rip, what team do you think stands out as the quote-unquote favorite? Well, we've seen a lot of, like, from Incarnate was probably, like, one of our strongest teams that we had. They broke up, and they formed basically two separate teams, which is Final Six and Karma, now Impact. So those two teams right now are the like the most looked at teams. I feel like everyone's looking at them, but everyone is like everyone so far that I've been seeing has been screaming and working hard just like to get up to their level and basically just like start folding them and toppling them. And right now I feel like we're all just like we're unsure of really like where we're at because we have like we haven't had like another tournament just to bring us all back together and see like okay who's who's where because nobody's like nobody's really like uh i'm not gonna say trying but like in scrims we're just basically working on things closing off things and we're not bringing out like all everything we got into scrims we're trying to like to just just leave people with the feeling like okay you, you can you can win you can beat us a couple of like games in these scrims but when it comes to tournament, we've got like things up our sleeve to right. pull out. Right. There's always <laughs> so, extra strats, and you know you don't count yeah. wins and losses and scrims to begin with. So uh, definitely having a tournament would be a great uh, a tournament where everyone's you know out there sweating would be a great way to kind of level who's been putting in the most work in this time. Uh, so you're gonna say final six and impact are your quote unquote favorites, but obviously the field. Uh, could catch up. Mike, what do you think right off the rip when you look at these Xbox teams? Who stands out to you? Uh, I gotta say Ego and uh, Rival. I really like Ego as a dark horse. Uh, I know they, they don't make friends. I know this for a fact. I've seen plenty of it. I think anyone that's involved in the Xbox League knows that. They're not out there to make friends. Very competitive. They're pretty, cl they're pretty clear about that. We're not out here to make friends. Uh, but that team has some talent. I've watched, I watched them play in one of the qualifiers. Um, I've kind of watch some streams. That's a team that I personally think is a dark horse. Obviously, there's a lot of talent in this league. Um, that's why it's the Premier League. But I think if right. you're going to take a team that people aren't expecting, I agree, Ego. You were saying Revival? 
Yeah, revival definitely. After what I uh, I seen, they can uh, they can pull out uh, during the tournament. I think uh, I want to see what can happen with the Xbox team. Yeah, absolutely. I'm trying to actually look at Revival's roster um, right now. I got it right here. If you want me to, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Call it up. Their starters are Cersei, Joe Bot, B Speak, Doctor Hattie, Doctor B, FTD, and Smasic. Yeah, definitely a good so team. Cersei and Joe Bot, you know, stand out to me right away from that roster. Yeah, absolutely. Very, very good team. I know it's a team that competed in a couple of our quals. Definitely have some talent. Uh, looking forward to seeing and them. Another team I definitely need to say that I uh, have my eye on is Impact. Now that they, uh, now that Karma got picked up and they are now Impact, it's uh, I want to see what, what what they're going to bring to the table now that they have an org behind them. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and one other team, and obviously, if you don't get called out, it doesn't mean we think you're a bad team. But these are just the teams that immediately point out to me. Uh, Relapse. So Relapse has some names on it that played in our quals before, but never as a team. Uh, we got CN back on a team, uh, Speeds back on a team, So Moist. This is a team that's got, uh, I think everybody on the team might be skill rating 4,200 plus. Uh, this is a very skill rating, competitively te uh, stacked team. Just want to see if they can bring it all together. Uh, I actually haven't seen much about them scrimming. So I'd like to see where they uh, where they are along in their scrims, how they hold up. But really excited to see them play in the league. Uh, and I'm really happy to see some of those faces back. Um, anything else you want to mention about any of the teams on the list, about any of the rosters, June, before we move on? Uh, not really. Everyone here, like, they got a lot of skill, and it's just a matter of if they're going to show it or not when it comes time. The biggest chip to win. Like, who, who wants this win the most? I think we want it the most. You think you do? <laughs> good attitude to have, I guess, right? That's a good answer. I, yeah, you know, good answer. I'd like to put myself down. We we've been working hard. We we want this win. We want to like really show that hey, we got this. You know. Awesome. Right. What about you, Mike? Well, I definitely I definitely want to say that uh that with this being season one of the Xbox League, uh you, you know you guys have a little bit more on your shoulders here to mm -hmm. represent. You know, uh, whoever is the top teams for this league for this season you're going to carry that name. You know what I mean? Yep. Like people are going to look on to you from, from like now on to continuing on to other seasons. So definitely, uh, definitely think about that when it comes to your team and outside of the league and things like that. Make sure you, uh, you guys keep a level head and keep everything in order. Absolutely. Nothing you ever, nothing any of the Xbox teams has ever done before matters. Now you're in the overguard. It's a clean slate. Time to prove yourself again. Exactly. And uh, yeah, really now, now is the time to do what you need to do. No, none of that other stuff. That none, of, none of the other team drama or any of that other stuff that might have happened before. It's all it's here and now. Now it's time to make the name for your team. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, so mm -hmm. congratulations to all the Xbox teams that we'll be making in the league. We will be figuring out that last slot momentarily. Uh, next up. Avons, I know you've been sitting there patiently. We're going to talk about the gauntlet. We're going to talk about these teams that got selected for the gauntlet. I want to hear kind of oh, your nice. opinions on some of these teams. Uh, I can walk you through a roster or two if I have to. Um, I know you probably saw a couple of them play this weekend. And we can uh, kind of, maybe I'll even get a prediction from you on the five or seven that will be making the league. Um, so I'm just going to go top to bottom on the teams that already qualified. They are just basically the teams that, uh, by the end of the Premier League season, a lot of our teams dropped out, obviously. We lost, um, starting in the beginning, we lost OG6, we lost Umerx, we lost Nebulous, we lost Sway GG, we lost One Mind, we lost the original Team Royal, which is once they uh, changed their sponsorship, they just became Rain. We lost a lot of teams. So basically, the way it ended up working out was because the top eight were supposed to stay, and we only ended with seven, if you were still here and you still had the captain that you started with, you still had your league spot. So we're ending up with seven league teams right off the rip. So we have Striatum, Last Rites, REM, Rebel, Royal, Her Champion, and Impact. So Impact obviously is a cross-platform organization now. They do have uh, the team formerly known as Karma on Xbox, and they have the team formerly known as the Poison Bins on PlayStation. Uh, now as far as the teams that are competing in the gauntlet this weekend, Avance, uh, we have Five Mikes, which is captained by Die Clan Crush. Uh, we have Cryptic Void, which is captained by Mimbot, Elite Gaming, which is captained by Caleb Jeff. Cactus Flower Kids, captained by Olympus Chains and Drizwu. I don't know who the official captain is. Revival, captained by, I believe, Tryhard Rice Ninja. Untitled, 
Uh, that is K Slims and Aces team. Baiters, which is Z Wild Tigers team, uh, PR Joker, uh, it's Gunbro. And then Swim Team, which is a new roster that's capped by Drip and Paint. Uh, they have players like P. Diggy uh, and some other top talent on that roster. Uh, Sinful, which is Addison Davis's team. And Otaku, which is O Silence team. So when you hear those teams, uh, Abonts, what team, what, give me, give me the top three you hear. Uh, I think for sure to start with Revival. Mm -hmm. Um, they're Reinhardt Swaglod. This guy is a beast on Ryan, on Ryan, dude. Uh, whenever I scrimmed him, uh, and they had intrinsic at the time, they ran a lot of triple tank against us. So, this guy has probably the cleanest, most aggressive Reinhardt I've ever seen. It's just because it's, I mean, like if you can get away with being aggressive and end it off cleanly, it's just a major advantage to you, you know. Absolutely. By far. He was. And, um, he had a very good tournament this week, uh, this weekend, past weekend. So, major component to that roster for sure. Yeah, and then the Kslim's team. Well, uh, they're like uh, we were. I was in their team before. Uh, Kslim's, Ace, Chris. These guys are like really great guys. I played with them uh, for. A, we've had a couple scrims with them. Kslim's by far probably being probably being the best Zarya on PS4. Uh, Ace, very uh, top Reaper dude. He's very flexible. In terms of DPS, Chris, probably number one Zen. Um, he's really great at what he does. And I know he's been flexing on a little bit of Ana. I'm not sure if he's still practicing that or not, but I know I know those three guys. Uh, I'm not too sure who the other three guys are. Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen their roster yet. But uh, I'm sure they're going to be a really good team. Uh, five, mi five mics. Uh, I know they have Dyklan on there. So, you know, he's he's a pretty good Reinhardt. Uh to call. I know they got Golden Bullet. Logging Out is in the team, I believe, right? Yeah, yeah. I personally, as a Lucio, I think Logging Out is the uh, the Don right now on PlayStation. His I don't know if you're listening to them scream or stream or anything. His oh, call yeah, outs yeah. as a shot caller. Oh man. Yeah. I wish oh, yeah. I wish I had the energy he has, man. He's he's on point. Uh one of the best for sure. Yeah, I, I whenever I play with him on rank, he just yells at the top of his like like throw like but in a good way you yeah know, it's helpful to, like call out it's stuff. helpful yeah. right yeah that's what i love yeah. about it is people get mad at him in rank sometimes They're like shut up it's like no this he's being helpful right now yeah like, yeah exactly um next is uh otaku yep. yeah otaku is like really good we scrimmed them um not too long ago and they're really they're a really solid team uh i think osek is one of the like i would say top five reinhardt's in the in on ps4 right now mm -hmm. uh, i think he's really good uh, I saw a little bit of his Winston. I I, I approve of his Winston. Uh, <laughs> you got the Avon seal of approval. <laughs> yeah, dude. I I, uh, I look at some Winstons around that I see in the PS4 league, and it's like, ah, uh, you know, uh, they could do something a little bit better. I of course could could do something a little bit better as well, but you know, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll talk to you though. A really a really solid team though. I know a Silence a McCree main, I believe, right? Yep. Right. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Well, Silence uh, a um. He's. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go out and say it. I think he's a top five flex on PlayStation. I've seen him play oh. Lucio. I've seen him play Mercy. I've seen him play Reinhardt. I've seen him play McCree. All at a high level. Uh, I think he's been playing a lot of Zarya for them now because they have good DPS in. Uh, what's the guy? Mick, Mick Lizzy. Mick Sizzy. Mick Lizzy. Is that is that what it is? I'm oh, Dizzy. 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 Dizzy, Dizzy yeah, Dizzy Mick Lizzy. Sorry, Dizzy, for that. Uh, not remembering your name exactly. They have him, and they have another DPS. I'm pretty sure. I oh, Shakira Kato. Yes, Shakira Kato. Yep. That's what it is. So yeah. Silent's been playing a lot of Zarya, and he's very good at it. So, uh, shout outs to them. They're a very good team for sure. Yeah, for sure. Then I mean, obviously, um, there's your that... deep sleepers. I think like Cactus Flower Kids again. Uh, you know, they they I think opened a lot of eyes this weekend. Um, yeah, I don't know about you. I don't know what you think, but I just when watching when I was watching them play, I was very impressed. No, yeah, uh, my next my next team was actually going to be Cactus Flower Kids, man. Uh, they, I like I saw Driz and uh, you said Olympic Chase is in there, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, I like Driz is like a really cool dude, so I was automatically going for him. But yeah, I was kind of surprised of how well they played because I'm not too sure. I, I've never heard of them up until that point. I, I wasn't sure how much practice they'd gotten in as a team. And 
So for them to come back and I think like they were playing against five mics, right? Yeah, really? two old five mics. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was a really impressive way to come back. Like from, I think they were losing on King of the Hill, right? And then yeah, they just came back. They were. They were down two zero. Five mics blew it. Um, yeah, reverse. <laughs> I actually, I actually got some intel afterwards from Olympus Chains. They had not scrimmed once as a team. Walking in, wow. walking into their first match, it was the first time they had played as a team. Uh, so playing five mics was their second time playing as a team. So um, very good team. Obviously, can only get better. I also really like Baders. Uh, PR Joker on McCree is an issue. Um, I, I've heard, I'm not going to say who told me this, but I got a quote from someone and said, uh, if you want to put Ryan AM as a 10 out of 10 McCree, you're putting PR Joker as a 20 out of 10. Uh, and Ryan, Ooh. obviously a McCree that gets a lot of, uh, a lot of hype in the league. Uh, so PR Joker, I think is a very solid DPS. And I think it makes that team play at a very high level. What else do you, do you know anything about Baders? Uh, I don't know. I I've, I don't think I played against any of them. Let me see if um, I can so, get, get I can't really say anything about them. Let me see if I can get you an official roster. Um, if you want right. to, did you have anything about any other teams? Uh, yeah, sinful Addison Davis. Yep. Uh, I know, I know he's like a really good Genji. I, I don't know who his roster is either, but I'm sure he probably has a solid squad too. I'd like to screen them soon. Yeah, they do. They have a very a very good team. Um. I'm not going to go digging for this roster right now. But yeah, Baders is uh, a very solid, good. very solid team. Um, Z Wild Tiger, it's Gumbro. So yeah, let this this gauntlet's got a lot of teams that could that could make it. Why don't you? Um, who who do you think is the top five out of those teams? Oh man! All right, right, right. Give me five um, predictions. I think Revival. Okay. Uh, Untitled. Okay. Otaku. Uh, let's see, Cactus and Five Mics. There it is. There are Abonce's picks for the five, and obviously if we extend to seven, oh, there'd be two more in there, guys, but um, we'll keep it at five for now. So yeah, the gauntlet, I mean, obviously there's a big document out, guys. You can find it. It's been pinned basically everywhere in the Discord. Uh, I'm going to tweet it out after this podcast goes live as well. It explains better for what this weekend is, but basically we're going to be live Friday and Saturday night, guys, with some awesome gauntlet matches. Uh, and then by the end of the weekend, we're going to know who will be joining those seven teams that we listed in the beginning of the podcast in the Premier League. Uh, so very exciting weekend coming up for sure. All right, so now let's open the floor back open to everybody and let's talk about these patch notes. Um, let's talk about the current patch. I mean, obviously there's the uh, there's the biggest you know the the elephant in the room about the patch. It's that we got a new character. Um, what do you guys? She's think? broken, man. You think so? You think she's broken? Uh, so. Well, let's get. Let's well, go, let's no, go I through. I don't think she's broken, broken. I just think that like if you, you can use her very skillfully, but some things about her are definitely broken. <laughs> let's go through. Um, <laughs> let's go through one at a time and say what your initial impressions are on Sombra. Uh, so Mike just kind of gave us his. Do you have anything you want to add on to that? Uh, I think she's she plays just like a tracer, but she's very different in the fact that the way that I feel like people are going to use her are they're just going to camp. Like, especially depending on if they're attacking or defending. Because, like, you'll have to play her differently for Poth, Payload, Capture, Assault, whatever. But people are just going to camp a health pack, keep that as their health pack, and basically just hide, go in the back lines, and keep finding openings for them to pick or pick away and do damage to their tanks and or, like, squishies until they build up alt and then they get ready to alt. As soon as they can, like, they're either going to go invis on it, or they're going to just TP over the whole team and then use their ult and pair it up with a hammer down or high noon, whichever. Like, you can hide pre-high noon, alt, and then it's just going to work very nicely if it gets pulled off. But at the same time, if you, they're doing that, she's, like, it's going to be a 5v6 most of the time. Sombra is basically makes her team play a 5v6 most of the time until she can actually get her picks and or use whatever she's got to like help out her team because you'll never see a Sombra frontlining with the behind Ryan shield or anything like that it's just not going to happen that's not her kid kid so let me she's ask going to work let me ask you this so you're, you're saying you know use, use the Sombra all now Reinhardt obviously can't hold up a shield um and you uh, you can Paired probably, yeah, you probably get that high noon off, and you know maybe you, you get the three or four of them that are standing there, and you know the two that are up behind the corner you don't get. But what's what's the benefit of running a sombra, and opposed to just running Zarya Tracer? 
and getting because Zarya obviously has the bubbles that can protect her team. What what is besides her ultimate? What does Sombra do that makes her worth running? Because I'm just having a hard time. Yeah, that's cool. The idea she's, of the Wombo. She's combo. more of a more of an annoyance than what any other character can do, in my opinion. Because she like what I've done with her so far, and what I've seen like the most of the meta for her anyway. What it is, it's just like you you throw the the relocation pad next to a health pack. You hack the health pack, and then you go invisible, and hit, you hit the front line, and you do as much damage as possible. Take a little bit of damage, and then you re, uh, relocate back to the health pack, and rinse and repeat. And you do that until you get your ult. Once you get your ult, you set up a, a team play, and then you just go back to doing that. And that's all I've done with her so far. And in that aspect, she's extremely effective. I'm just constantly, constantly keeping DPS going out to the other team, keeping people distracted, and just keeping people annoyed pretty much the whole time, shutting them down. A yeah, uh, yeah, I would I would agree um, on most of that. The, the other thing is that um, the other thing that other aside from world that makes her, in my opinion, useful is that I don't see many sombras go up like uh, let's just use streets phase uh, on Hollywood for an example. Most of them, I guess, like camp health packs, which is what I would do too. But sometimes I go around and flank, and I go on top of the buildings and right and hack the Reinhardt shield from behind. Like I don't think you always have to wait for your ult to do something you could always do something reactively like you can by hacking it from on top you could also like allow your team to make a play because that's one that's one character who can't use abilities or something right right so it all depends you, on how skillfully you're gonna play it you know what i mean yeah however yeah, exactly. whatever at, like avenues you're gonna take when you get out to that front line so would all three of you prefer a sombra on your team over a tracer uh it depends, it depends. In, yeah it, it depends, depends who's in the current state right now i feel like we're not going to see that much Sombra being played at, like, the highest levels right now. So, like, I would much rather have a Tracer at the moment. But as soon as people start picking her up and start figuring out, like, how she's really supposed to be played and how, like, effective she can be, then I would choose a Sombra over Tracer any day. So this she's got is, so much more utility. This is what gets me right. the most, is Tracer can be pesky and be obnoxious behind the defensive line while using her abilities that allow for her to stay pesky she can be putting out damage so when she's tracer can blink shoot blink shoot recoil blink shoot you know whereas um somber when you're invisible you can't do anything the second you come out of the second you shoot you become you come out of invisible um so so uh basically with that being said i, I just feel like tracer can more effectively and more efficiently be annoying use her recall i i just I'm having a hard time with the current state Sombra's in because I just don't know if her ultimate is is enough. I don't even know if the ultimate's like something. It, it's very want. situational. Like it's not something that it's like a tracer bomb is broad across the board. You can use that on almost anything to counter almost anything. You know what I mean? Her ult that hacks is like very situational. You the other team's meta has to be almost a certain way in order for it to affect everyone, uh, like very effectively, I should say. Right. Okay. I, would, I also want to mention that uh, I feel like um, that Sombra is not very good in King of the Hill maps just because I feel that King of the Hill maps are more like uh, who kill, who's the last team standing? I mean, I mean, you know, TDM, so to speak, you know? Right. And right. Sombra can't Sombra can't put that much damage out because, you know, how she is like she has to go. She has to go back, get a health pack, go and then go invisible and go, and, you know, by then. It, like Jum said earlier, it's a 5v6 pretty much like most of the time up until you get all it. But yeah. I don't think it's really worth it in King of the Hill in my eyes at least. Yeah, to add on to what Awan says, like, it, when she calls back, she's got to wait. She's going to have to wait at least five seconds at that health back. She's going to put down her TP again, and then she's going to go right out there. But in that time, that's about... Okay, let's just say like eight seconds that she's out of the game. Exactly. Before she goes in, but while she's invisible, she still can't do anything but get behind. So that's another give or take like ten seconds. So that's, that's all. Ten saying. seconds that she's not doing anything for your team. That's all. I'm until saying. she yeah. calls out. There's just a lot of downtime with her. Whereas I feel like with Tracer and Genji, you can continue to be you're, annoying. You're always there. Yeah, that, yeah. that's that's yeah. my yeah. only thing. I see the value in her. I'm just think there's a lot of downtime, and uh, it can be harmful i guess if your team's not like super dedicated to it and i just don't know if she's worth being super dedicated to that's all uh so in the comments why don't we see some opinions on uh on some yeah i want to know what people think about yeah it. let's see some yep. what you guys think you know 
post a paragraph, go keyboard warrior, roast me, roast <laughs> roast Mike, roast Avon, roast June. We can handle it. Uh, let's hear some opinions. Uh, but otherwise, besides that, I mean, that's only a part of what we got in this. And it's just one character. Yeah, there is a lot yeah. of stuff. Obviously, we have like the new arcade. Uh, which I think is a lot of Those fun. Are so fun. Yeah, I really, really have a lot of fun with that. I don't know how much you guys have played it, um, but it's a lot of yeah, fun. Yeah, I mainly used it for the, the no limit. <laughs> That's all I've been using it so far for, so I can actually play Sombra because right. people, you know, auto lock yeah. going to quick play. But yeah, aside from that, the yeah. 1Bs and 3B3s, I tried 1B once, got absolutely destroyed, but uh, the 3Bs I haven't tried yet. It's definitely something I'm going to want to set up like. Uh, some some tournaments for something for the one Vs and three V threes, definitely. Yeah, for sure. Like oh, that'd, that'd be pretty cool. I saw some. Uh, yeah, with uh, Xbox having arena feature coming out after the holidays, that'll be something that's a little little bit easier for the Xbox side of things to get underway. Like aside from the overguard stuff. Yep, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's talk about Soldier seventy six. Uh, this is one oh, of the Lord. this is one of the glaring <laughs> changes we've had. I mean, if you've played any ranked, you're honestly, if you've played any Overwatch in the past mm-hmm. day, you, you, Soldier 76 is a new man. He's uh, he's he's all all changed. Uh, well, I think he, he does 500 damage per clip without headshots. Uh-huh. Uh, that's... 20 per yeah. shot now. That's unbelievable. Um, yeah, his bullet damage increased from 17 to 20. Maximum bullet spread increased from 2.2 to 2.4. Which is, like, not which that is... big of a difference for the amount of damage they gave him, I think. Exa- yeah, exactly. He's exactly. out there shredding. Uh, He's the new tank killer, I believe. Yeah. Like, I mean... Like, the bullet spread was just basically so he doesn't hit all his shots on, like, smaller-bodied characters, but, like, the distance, tanks... Yeah. Roadhog is going to take 500 easily. <laughs> Yeah. Like, and that's no headshots too. And then if we calculate headshots, he can one Helix, clip Helix Rocket, uh, Hog, and Helix Rocket, which is the burst damage that he can get, which is very well placed. I think at, this, well uh, placed. I think at this point, dude, like you don't even need his Helix Rockets for burst damage. He like his gun in general is just enough, is bursty enough. Like mm-hmm. should be able to drop someone. Exactly. He's so strong right now. I'm actually surprised they made him this strong. I just run out everywhere and he's just <laughs> there. And, like, especially when I hear his ult come off, you pair him up with the nano boost, he's going to shred some teams for sure. That's what oh, I'm yeah. seeing a lot of, is a lot of nano boosted uh, attack visor, and it's it's disgusting. You can't, you're, <laughs> you're not, if you're not a tank, you're not living through it. You're just not. Uh-oh. So, it, it's, he's really, really good right now, and I, I, I think he's going to probably replace McCree, but it's a good thing he's good, because, let's talk about Farah. Have uh, have you guys seen or played fair? Oh yes, I, I gave her a little bit of play time with that uh, that percent that they increased for her uh, normal uh, boost. Yeah, I would definitely say it's noticeable. You definitely get up to higher areas than you could before, and um, you stay in the air the whole time now. Like, there's no reason to ever touch the ground. So if you got some good skill behind fair, like most of the people do in the higher tier, uh, I'm, it's going to be interesting to see someone uh, try to take them out of the sky. Like her rockets now, like that uh, the knockback on the rockets make it a little bit easier like if you hit if you hit it to slightly to the side of like uh anybody they won't move as move as far so i feel like that's actually good for her now because when i was playing with her it was lined up perfectly where i would just shoot one rocket and right after the next i didn't have to calculate how far how far they had got knocked away because they would just be like basically in the same area and that it just follows up very easily She's definitely stronger, and I'm gonna. We're gonna see her a lot more, I think. Yeah, minimum explosion damage has increased by 13 percent. Knockback damage decreased to zero, and lift increased by 35 uh, percent. I was just gonna say that, like, I feel with the soldier, with the soldier buff coming out and this buff on Farah, I want to see how certain Farahs react uh, to this because I feel, I feel like. So if you get a pocketed Farah and you throw a Discord on that Farah and you get let's just say double hit scan, let's just McCree uh, Soldier. I wonder I wanna see how how someone plays against that. I don't think you can play against it, especially now with the with that um soldier buff, but uh I think the I think she might not be used as much, at least. That's what I think. Yeah, I think it's a uh, a pretty good counter, you know, counter buff for each other. 
and I think it'll uh, it'll really come down to if you have the hit scans that can hit the shot, or if you have the uh, fairs sure. that can just mm -hmm. put out crazy damage. So uh, just working back the opposite way, Abonth, where where do you see uh, where do you see Winston in this this current meta? Does he have a spot? Oh man, Winston. Uh, let's see. It, it it really depends. I think it's just a. Uh... Like, I think dive comp will always work, for sure. Because uh, many teams don't know how to react to it. They don't they don't know what to do whenever a Winston goes in and kills or supports or whatever. But I think I think the way to go is uh, either triple tank or a 2-2-2. Two, two, two. And uh, the, the two tanks is going to be Ryan Winston. Um, and I would only pick Winston on certain maps that have uh, small chokes. That way it's not... Um, that way, it's not as hard as, as on the Winston because you don't want to you don't want to give the Winston uh, a wide open area because then then he'll get uh, like shot a lot and he'll be kind of useless. So, you know, I, I, it just depends on the map. Absolutely, that's what I'd say. Jum, where do you see Zenyatta? Uh, Jum Yada. He's always gonna be there. He's gonna be there forever. I think there's he's not gonna get many tweaks anymore. I, I don't. I think right now in the current state that he's in, he's just gonna stay there for. Probably forever. I don't see them ever changing him. So he's perfect. You think he's balanced and right he's now? probably the best support in the game. <laughs> can't throw that out there. Just, you know. Yeah, so obviously we had the 30% uh, the ult nerf as well. Uh, we're going to see ultimates 30% less, which I think that that is a major big deal, uh, very big deal, because I think a lot of the way the game was kind of shifting to with how fast some of these ultimates charged, like Maze, which also got a 15% reduction, uh, and the nano-boosted ones. The nano-boost obviously got the speed nerf, uh, it was just turning into like a game of team wipes. Uh, whoever could execute their ultimate usage better was winning. And it wasn't as much about the actual game. I think with this nerf, you're going to see a lot of um, teams that can hit the shots, teams that can execute their strategies better, and teams that are just playing all around as a team better. Uh, disagree? Agree? Yeah, yeah, I agree uh, on, the mo on pretty much everything. And I want to add on top of that, the teams who, that can... Uh, who can do old management better will come out uh, more will come out on top more likely absolutely 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 it's because they know the results yeah right uh, I, I would say let's we should uh oh go ahead go ahead no you got it you got it no so i was just gonna say it. we should we should uh touch on diva but if you guys have anything more for that uh 30 percent all decrease yeah. uh diva, yeah. diva got some big changes that is for sure um yeah yeah which she she pretty much. I mean, what was that? Uh, that other thing that they did. Uh, they did for was that just a rework? Was that not a buff? Uh, well, they let her move they, speed. Yeah, they gave her faster shooting while moving, right? And they gave her a hundred extra armor. Is that what it was? Or two hundred extra armor? A hundred. It extra was armor. yeah. And ultimate cost has been decreased by twenty percent. Right, right. So I think I right. think Diva's going to be in a position again where she's she's potentially going to be meta. I, it really comes down to the I guess like the Zarya in my opinion. If the other team has a Zarya that can glow. Um, Diva's just going to continue to get shredded, I'd say. But if you have a, if if you can kind of be annoying with that Diva, where I just have a hard time dropping a Zarya or let's say a Roadhog to pick up a Diva, and I also have a hard time dropping a Winston or a Reinhardt to pick up a Diva. I feel like she's in a weird spot where I'm not sure if she's like an off tank or if she's a a, a main tank, and she's very situational. I feel like she might trump Zarya a little bit now because Zarya's uh, barriers have been decreased by 20% from the power gain that you get from them. Definitely Both of her barriers. Could, definitely could. What do you think, Jim, about yeah. D.Va? Uh, like you said, she's in a very weird position because not many people know like how we're supposed to really use her if she's very much a tank or an off tank. But I don't think she'll take over Zarya's spot because Zarya still got, has the barriers. And even though they don't give her as much charge, they still are very effective at just saving people's lives and keeping people alive and Grand allowing time. people to push in. The one and combos. as a Reinhardt, it's, I think she'll be used more, but she's going to be used more as a triple tank option. Right. Yeah, yeah I agree. Um, yeah. I don't I don't think... I don't really like D.Va as much just because I feel that her damage isn't what... I need. I mean, I feel like I could get more out of Azaria just if she got like a fire strike uh, that comes towards uh, your your Reinhardt. You can just bubble him and then bubble yourself. That's eighty percent charge. You can do more damage with that than a Diva, in my opinion. And I like Jum said, people many people don't know how to use her. 
uh, I'm kind of there too because I don't know really how to use her well. Uh, but I, I, I don't think that I don't think she'll be coming into play without triple tank. You almost like feel like you're supposed to backline with her because you can and do some poke, but then like you don't have your matrix in front of your team and you're almost playing selfishly. And it, she's just well, in a that, weird. That's she's the in a whole weird thing. Spot. That matrix, though. Right. Yeah, I mean, if you can utilize that matrix accordingly, especially with the increased health that they just gave her on top of the armor, I feel like she she could be utilized well. I mean, not uh, I wouldn't say Trump Z Zarya per se. As long as Zarya like she can still get the energy she needs from her barriers, then yeah, so be it. But. With the 20% decrease that I see, and then the 20% uh, decrease in ultimate cost from D.Va, I think that her having her bomb and utilizing her defense matrix might be a little bit better in some situations. Right, no, I definitely think the matrix is great. The matrix is is such a unique um, ability to have in Overwatch, obviously. Uh, it's just, it, it's just it's a, it's a hard role, I think, for teams to play around. Maybe King of the Hill if you want to go triple tank, but I would just personally rather have the Zarya or the Roadhog, in my opinion. Um, right. Just because of the, yeah, right. the damage you can get from the Roadhog or the the team capability that Zarya has, Zarya is is as much of a team player as as any character in the game. Obviously, with the bubble oh, you can pass out yeah. or the graviton that you throw it and let someone else get Pog. So yeah. uh, I think Zarya will always definitely have her place. Uh, indeed, but Diva is now making her way. She's in the discussion at least. A week ago, she was not in the discussion. So right. that's that's right. important. Right. 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 Um. What about Torbjorn with that scrap? Oh, don't even start. Automatically <laughs> generates over time now. He also gets 40%. I don't know. What does that say? The amount of scrap collected from a fallen enemy has been decreased by 40%. So he doesn't get too much scrap from a fallen enemy, but he gets he regenerates it over time now, so it doesn't matter, I guess. I need to warn everyone. We're now entering the Torbjorn mode. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Drag your Torbjorn oh, mains. <laughs> like, it's it's going to get spooky here. We're His sway even. speed increased by twenty five percent and damage decreased by twenty seven percent. We're done talking. About, think... We're done talking about Torbjorn now. <laughs> yeah, I can talk for hours. About what do you think? <laughs> Tell me what well, you I think. Was just gonna, I was going to say that like Torbjorn should be paired up as like an off tank next to Reinhardt, so they can both earth shatter them. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right, that's, well, a, that's enough. Right, yeah. We're done. Um, so, well, I think that's going to kind of wrap this podcast up, guys. Uh, we do have the gauntlet this weekend, so make sure you tune in the stream. That'll be Friday night, starting at seven thirty p.m. EST. Uh, Juman Abons, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, do either of you have anything Thanks. you want to say uh, before this podcast wraps up? Abons, you can go first. Uh, yeah, so I want to give a shout out to Crude Dude. Uh, he stayed up extremely late, uh, so late that he stayed up for an entire day because he wanted to play. He was a he was gonna sub in for me in the in the Control Freak tourney, and not to mention he's from Australia, so he was playing with some uh, with some lag issues, but he did extremely well. Mm -hmm. um on the attorney and i can't thank him enough for helping out cool awesome. cool shout out to crew dude jim uh no real shout outs but i just would like to thank everyone here thanks to the whole staff for allowing xbox to just jump in and be with be a part of ps4 and compete in the overguard absolutely cool. excited to have you guys uh so thanks again guys for stopping by mike do you have anything before we wrap this up I know that's about it. I'm just excited to see Xbox get underway. So Awesome. See you guys next week, I guess, for the next podcast. Yeah, we will see you guys next week for the podcast, and we will see you this weekend, uh, twitch.tv slash the overguard uh, for our gauntlet. Thanks again, Jum and Abons, and we will see you guys later.